Look at that. Look at that snow on the mountains. So pretty. So pretty. Shit. Of course, you could argue that that's indicative of the effects of global warming, but, I mean, what do I really know, right? <laughs> uh, okay, so, three things. Running, foot of a ferret, and the Apple Watch Series 4. Uh, God, look at my hair. I look fucking ridiculous. But you know what? That's fine. That's fine, because when I come out here, I come out here to get my workout on and not to care what I look like. Let me adjust the microphone. Is this better? Is this, does this, is this what you want? This is going to be a very bad vlog, but you know what? I don't care. I'm out of practice and I just got to make a vlog and that's what counts. <sighs> Thing one, uh, foot of a ferret. I, I think that's what I said. Foot of a ferret running on the Apple watch. Foot of a ferret. If you are anything like me, then you will have a very, uh, a very deep fascination with YouTube history and, and commentary, uh, but you don't really give a shit about like the YouTube drama channel, like like Drama Alert. I, I really don't care which tuber called out which tuber. I don't I don't give a fuck. We're all people. It's people being stupid to other people. That's what that is. Um, but Foot of a Ferret is a channel. I believe the guy's name is Ryder. Um, he does a show called A Brief History, and in A Brief History, he talks about the brief histories of various things, and he did one on, like, Sonic the Hedgehog, he did one on, uh, Rebecca Parham, who is a YouTube animator, um, most recently, I believe, just, like, today, he dropped an episode on, um, YouTube as a whole when it comes to celebrities, like, invading the platform. Um, he, he wasn't... He wasn't really as, like, combative as that, but he did use the word invading, and I think in some cases it applies. Uh, he talked about how... Um, I'm just going to take a little nap here. He talked about how um, big celebrities like um, Conan O'Brien, the, the late-night shows... <coughs> excuse me, excuse me. Um, traditional movie stars like The Rock and Will Smith, how they all have... Uh, channels on the platform and even if they're not necessarily as big as some of the larger um, creator run channels uh, they still have a hell of a lot of influence and that's not really a good thing their influence and their traditional TV money is part of the reason god this is horrible this is just bad but I don't care uh, their influence is part of the reason why the adpocalypse and demonetization is so bad and why it hurts creators so much um, so I thought that was a very interesting take on what is ultimately a complex issue involving money and traditional media trying to find a place in what is essentially a community run platform a lot of people these days don't like the word community when it comes to YouTube because they feel like the term has been sort of bastardized as like not meaning what it should or what it used to or maybe they feel like it hasn't ever been a community which sure you could argue that ultimately even from the very beginning youtube was a business and all businesses by the very nature of the thing are intended to make money and survive and continue like i i get that i'm not i'm not saying that youtube is ultimately an altruistic thing and always has been that's not the case but it is a very unique thing for what it is. As far as I know, there was not a video sharing platform designed with individual creators in mind. Like, like there was some before this. There was like Albino Black Sheep and E-Bombs World, but for the most part, that was like Flash animators making jokes, and it wasn't necessarily personality-driven like YouTube basically has been from day one. So that was... He, he, I think, I think the guy's name is Ryder. He, he did a, a very nice um, history on the influence of celebrity within a platform designed for the average person, the everyman. I thought that was a very, very cool look at what is a complicated issue. 
he didn't overly simplify it, which I like. I like when it's sort of a deep dive. Um, so I, I really appreciated that. Um, if you like brief histories and oftentimes ones on YouTube-centered issues, then I recommend you subscribe to Foot of a Ferret. That's, that's the guy's name, Foot of a Ferret. Um, I don't know enough about video editing programs to add a visual link, but if, if I know what I'm doing, then there's going to be a link here. It, or, 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 or at least a, a, a block of text showing his name. If not, then I, this is embarrassing for me. <laughs> um, second thing, running. I fucking hate running. Hate it so much. But um, if you've seen... It's going to sound creepy, but I, I don't mean it to be creepy. I mean it to be objective. If you've seen pictures of Casey Neistat running shirtless, <laughs> the dude is fucking ripped. He is just ripped to shreds. And I'm sure he goes to the gym. You don't get big biceps from running, but... Like, what you do have is a loss of body fat, which contributes to overall muscle uh, visibility, right? And that's, I think, what he gets most out of running, and that's what I want. I don't want to be... God bless you, Papa Rock. I don't want to be as big as you. <laughs> I don't want to look like a Goliath of a man. I'm not tall enough for that to be realistic anyway. I'm not even six foot tall, so... It wouldn't be good for me to look as big as the Rock. But I want to look cut up, right? Purely aesthetic, does not matter, has no bearing on my overall creative work. I get that, but it's just, it's an aesthetic goal that I want to have. Who knows if it'll ever happen, but for the most part, I think you mostly get that by running. Because running burns calories, helps to get rid of body fat, and it also fucking sucks. But you gotta do it. You gotta do it. It's good for you. It's good for your heart. That's actually a huge benefit is that it's really good for your heart. Because let, let, let's face it, if God forbid one day my heart decides to throw a clot, you know, all of a sudden it, everything is going to work much, much, much harder to try to compensate and it might kill me. <laughs> that, that would suck. <laughs> but if I run, then I can get my heart used over time. I can get used to working really hard and being better prepared for it. Right, And I think that's an important uh, goal to have as far as uh, like overall life goals and, and fitness and whatnot. So I don't run very often, but I'm going to keep running because it's just good for me and it's good for you. So run if you can, if you're able to, and it will be good for you. But take it easy at first. Don't don't instantly run a marathon after not doing anything for 10 years. That's just a recipe for disaster. Take it slow. Ease into it. Start running. Thing three. The Apple Watch Series 4. Um, my company decided to uh, give all of us... A, God damn it. Uh, my company decided to give all of us a gift for having a particularly good year financially. This is the company that I got as far as my third job of 2018. It's the one that I still have. It's, um, I like it. I really like it. I'm not going to go into too many details about it because of very obvious internet reasons, but I like what I have as far as a day job. It's, it, it finally feels like I have a decent, good day job. Still not my goal. Still not my passion. I'm still trying to become a full-time writer. That is ultimately what I want at the end of the world. But you still got to pay the bills for right now. And this is a good way to pay the bills without me going completely and totally insane. Hopefully. And as a result of having a good year in terms of finances, I, I guess we made the company a lot of money. Um, <coughs> excuse me. They got all of us Apple Watches, which is kind of a ridiculous thing <laughs> to give someone as an, like, as an employee gift. Um, like, I still can't believe they did that. We're, we're easily talking $7,000 plus the company spent on Apple Watches for all of us, just in my department. I don't even know how many they gave overall. Like, a, it's fucking nuts. 
but I guess we did good because you wouldn't spend that much money on part of a company that you didn't care about. So that, that's good. You know, that's pretty good. Um, if you were, if you were around during my horrible, horrible fiasco with the BlackBerry Key One, then you will know that I was able to get that fixed. I switched back to my old phone, this one here, old standby. It's an iPhone 6s, um, but I had been considering going to a newer smartphone, like a like a bigger plus size phone, like a like a small tablet size phone, um, when I can upgrade again later on in the year. And I was giving some serious consideration to not going with an Apple product, mainly because they're so exclusive, they're so proprietary, um, and they're expensive. They're really expensive for what they are. They look fantastic. I love the look of them, and I love the, the nature of the OS, but they're so restrictive, and they're so expensive. They're, they are, honestly, too expensive for what you get. They are. You're paying for the name. That's it. It's like, it's like going to a Gucci store and getting a handbag when ultimately what you're doing is spending $2,000 on a handbag a handbag which is going to get real dirty real quick why would you ever but um, I had been considering going with a different uh, smartphone for the future and then this happened <laughs> And now I'm torn because I, I like the thing. I like what it can do. I like, I like having a smart watch. It's, it's not going to change my life, but I like having it. Um, but apparently you can't make an Apple Watch work with an Android device unless you jailbreak it. And I don't really want to do that because I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to jailbreaking things. So now I have a decision to, a decision to make. Do I stick with the watch and go with a iPhone 11 S plus XR whatever BS or do I abandon the watch and go with a uh, Android smartphone I do ultimately want to go with a plus XR S size phone a small tablet size phone because I use this thing all the time as an entertainment device. I use it more as that than I do as a phone, right? I'm watching YouTube on this shit all the time, and a bigger screen would be good for that. And a bigger size means hopefully a bigger battery, right? And that's important when you're using this thing constantly. But I really like the Apple Watch. So do I go with a large iPhone and get to keep the watch and use it like I hope so? Or do I go with a bigger Android and jailbreak the watch, sell it secondhand? I don't know. It's out of its packaging, so I can't return it or exchange it for anything. And it was a gift from the company with no receipts, so I can't, like, give it... I couldn't have even, like, gotten the cost of the thing back. So, it, 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 it's... I don't know. I don't know. I'm torn right now though I'm gonna keep it and it's gonna be quite a long time until I can upgrade so it'll be good to have just for right now I don't know whatever so that's things one two and three food of a ferret running and the Apple watch series four yeah I hope you're having a good day I'm having a good day so far and I will talk to you later